Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to continue to have a look at the severe thunderstorms that are going to be impacting most of the British Isles over the next day or two. We have thunderstorm warnings widely issued today, we have them widely issued again tomorrow and in the far south through Wednesday as well. Now we did see some severe thunderstorms breaking out behind this weather front. This is the boundary for the instability. Behind it, we saw some severe, severe storms across northern England, a lot of across Scotland, Northern Ireland, and the Republic of Ireland. And we did even see a snap amber warning put in force for storms across the northern parts of Northern Ireland as well. It didn't come to much didn't come to too much in the end um, and it did expire last night at 10 p.m but it just shows you that there are severe storms about and we could see these warnings slightly changed at very short notice so we'll go through all the warnings today and look at the weather models but please do keep up to date with the weather warnings on your phone on the meta office website as they can change at very short notice but I'm recording this around late morning and you can see there are some heavy showers and storms breaking out. But all this precipitation here is going to re really reignite over the course of the early afternoon into the middle to late afternoon as well. Producing some real severe thunderstorms once again today. So do remember if you enjoy my videos make sure you like and subscribe. And remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. I'm going to go through Twitter as well because we're going to be able to see some of those images from those storms yesterday um, across Scotland. There were some real, real photogenic storms, severe storms, flooding was seen in many areas. So yeah, it could be some quite severe impacts more widely today and tomorrow. So on the live radar you can see a lot of precipitation around which is good. It's good to raise those water levels but at the moment it's mostly in the north and the west where the water levels aren't as dangerously low as they are further eastwards. But all this instability is slowly shifting eastwards and it will be across the far east quite widely over the course of this afternoon but probably more into Tuesday and across the far south and the east into Wednesday. You can already see a few of these little showers popping off and these are what we're likely to see to produce the big storms. These are really getting going over the coming hours and you can see it's just widespread heavy shower and storm activity. You can see across southern Ireland and parts of western Wales some heavy storms breaking out and it's going to be more widespread over the course of the afternoon. This weather front at the moment is going to be sweeping through and behind it that is where we're going to be seeing those storms break out and perhaps you can see even maybe a few ahead of it as well. Just the instability combined with the big warmth it is producing these showers and storms. Some areas across northern Scotland saw some real severe outbreaks of storms through uh, near Inverness saw some significant flooding there. Um, so yeah, if you are further eastwards and you had another stunning day yesterday and still having a stunning morning and afternoon today, it is all about to change over the course of either this afternoon or more widely into tomorrow. If we do actually have a look at those last 24 hour rainfall totals, it will give, give us a good indication of where that heavy precipitation was. So if we do get it to load, you can see those yellows. That's where we saw these thunderstorm tracks. So you can see near Inverness, we saw some significant rainfall through parts of northern Scotland, through near Dundee, Dunfermline, Edinburgh, saw some significant rainfall as well. And you can see across the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland where we see these yellow spots here. This is where we saw the amber warning. Again, not, nothing too significant in the end. Um, probably not as amber warning worthy as parts of Scotland. But we did see that put into force. We're likely to see these streaks of yellow once again. But further eastwards, perhaps across more parts of England and Wales. These thunderstorms really breaking out. And of course, these storms were yesterday and last night. And as I said, we're expecting them to be more widespread today. Perhaps even more widespread across at least England into tomorrow. And if we do have a look at the temperatures right now, now it is um, around half ten I'm recording this, but you can already see those temperatures are nowhere near as high as they have been the last few days. Those reds only breaking out in the far east where we are avoiding the rain or well, the precipitation at the moment, thick cloud and the storm activity. So it could still get up into the high 20s, maybe even low 30s come, um, come this afternoon. So it still could be a very hot day across London, East Midlands into East Anglia as well. We'll just have to see exactly how it does break out. Um, but at this stage, um, but at this stage, I do think more areas today are going to be seeing those cooler conditions than yesterday. That really only was for the far west today. Will be much widely cooler and much widely more thundery. 
Now, if you go over to Twitter and have a look at some of these uh, images, you can see this wall cloud moving in. That's part of Scotland. Again, some of these images from the BBC weather. From thunderstorms across Scotland. Major, major lightning. And again, some of these photogenic clouds. Yeah, really, really quite impressive, all these storms. And as I said, we're expecting to see this more widespread across the next few hours um, and the next couple of days as well. Just, yeah, beautiful photogenic storms. Again, dangerous, but quite beautiful and stunning nonetheless. So, if we do go over to the weather warnings and have a look, you can see we've got widespread yellow warning for thunderstorm in force for most of the United Kingdom at the moment. And yes, the warnings don't extend into the Republic of Ireland, but I would expect there again to be similar uh, similar issues. So yeah, thunderstorm warning covering most of England or all of England and Wales, all of Northern Ireland and most of Scotland. Again, if we do have a look at it in detail, starts 10am today till midnight tonight. Hit and miss thunderstorms likely to develop through Monday producing some torrential downpours for some spots and potential disruption. Again, it hasn't been updated since Saturday, but again, high impact, low likelihood. And again, 20 to 30 millimetres possible, 40 to 50 millimetres falling in a few hours. Again, just widespread warning, just basically saying any areas within this could see severe thunderstorms. And again, Met Office are not 100% sure exactly where they're going to develop. And that is the nature, unfortunately, of thunderstorms. So I know some people do get a lot of flack. I do get a lot of flack on here for saying, oh, there's going to be severe thunderstorms here. And that is the most likely, likely scenario. But with thunderstorms, they're one of the most difficult things to forecast because they are so localised generally. You can go from rainfall rates of 50 millimetres per hour to almost zero in the space of a couple miles. And that sort of thing is very difficult to forecast. So do bear with it. Um, but in these yellow warning areas, that is the most likely um, area for those storm activity. Um, and sorry, that was the. Uh, and then if we go to Tuesday's warning, you can see again this widespread yellow thunderstorm warning back in force from tomorrow at midnight until midnight again into. Uh, well, midnight tonight into midnight tomorrow. Again, has been updated this morning. Warning updated from a very low likelihood to, to a low likelihood. And what does that mean? It means potentially. We could see an amber warning put in force for this because the Met Office are slightly more sure with this warning. Now, I have said in the last few videos that I have expected Tuesday to be the highest activity day, especially widely across central England. Again, 20 30 millimeters rate possible in an hour, 50 millimeters in less than three. So, yeah, while some places will remain dry, others will likely see thunderstorms with torrential rain bringing disruption. And we also have a yellow warning for rain from tonight at midnight until tomorrow at 10am spells of heavy rain um, during early Tuesday mainly due to travel disruption again high impact low likelihood further 20 to 30 millimeters of rain could fall in some places isolated rumbles of thunder are possible again this is likely to be sort of the remnants of thunderstorms that have developed further south over the course of today into the evening and again because it's all associated with the weather front it does still hang on to its precipitation for a while so that's why there is a yellow warning here, because it could dump a lot of rain there, even though it's not sort of an active storm. And then we have the yellow warning for thunderstorms in the south. Again, it hasn't been updated since yesterday, but still, 9am until midnight on Wednesday. While some places will stay dry, others are likely to see thunderstorms with torrential rain during Wednesday afternoon. Well, Wednesday um, during the day, bringing some possible disruption. As we'll see in the models in a second, you'll see that risk there. So, if we do go to the UKV, have a look at those precipitation, and we'll also have a look at the temperatures over the next five days. As you can see, if we run out to this afternoon, you see those heavy storms breaking out across much of the north, and even into the London area, East Anglia as well, across the southern parts of the Pub Island, southwest England, and into parts of Wales as well. Just a widespread scattering of thunderstorms. And you can see, just it does peter out into the evening, as ever, but still could be some shower and storm activity into the overnight hours, and just persistent rain across parts of eastern Scotland. It's then into tomorrow afternoon where we see severe storms, look at that widespread reds breaking out, lines of storms here, wherever the cape really does sort of uh, pep them up, that's where we're going to see the heaviest and most prolonged storms. And it will just continue over through Tuesday afternoon, eventually fading away and could turn into a more persistent band of rain across Wales and Northern England through Wednesday and eventually we do see some more storms breaking out as I said across the far south and southeast through Wednesday afternoon that's why we still got that yellow warning in force before it eventually does die away and we go more settled still rain pushing in from the Atlantic but again widely more settled
If you do look at those two meters temperatures, you can see this afternoon, temperatures could rise to as high as 28, 29, 30, or even an isolated 31 degrees there across the northeast of England. So yeah, it could still be very hot in a few places, but elsewhere further westwards, much, much cooler with those thunderstorms breaking out. Into Tuesday, again, you can see widely much cooler, still 26 to 27 possible in the far east, but widely into the low teens, oh, sorry, low 20s, high teens. Into Wednesday, seeing those temperatures rise potentially into the mid 20s there, more mid teens across the Midlands where we have those heavier thunderstorms still breaking out and those weather fronts pushing through. And by Thursday, it's widely back towards average. Low 20s, average for this time of year, really, and into Friday. Again, perhaps even rising towards the mid to high 20s. So still pretty warm later this week, but nowhere near as oppressive as we have had recently. A good 5 degrees plus below that. So if we do go to the WRF, have a look at what that's showing for the Cape charts today. Again, you can see through this afternoon, significant Cape breaking out across Republic of Ireland, Wales, southwest England, northern England, and perhaps east Anglia as well. As we saw in the UK view precipitation charts, that's where we're seeing the most amount of thunder storm activity. Again, it is all correlated. More Cape, the higher energy available to when convection does start getting going. So you can see that does eventually degrade overnight, still lingers in a few places, which means the heavy precipitation and maybe some thunder activity does continue into the night, but mostly will degrade away. But then you can see for Tuesday afternoon, it does pick up across central areas. You can see these waves of Cape moving southwards. So severe storms could be breaking out there within these higher levels of Cape. They are localized higher levels. This is why it's very difficult because these shift slightly northwards, slightly southwards, slightly eastwards, westwards. It will, produce, it will move the positioning of the storms. In some areas that were forecast nothing on some of these um, computer models will see masses amounts. Some that are seeing huge storms will see nothing. And that is the difficulty with this. But at at this moment, the central England is East Anglia, potentially southern Wales, southwest England, into the London area as well, the highest chance of storm activity before it eventually degrades away. And into Wednesday, Cape does break out across the southeast corner. So the most severe storms for Kent, maybe Essex into the London area, maybe Surrey, the Isle of Wight, could in fact be Wednesday morning. So if you don't see anything too significant today or tomorrow, you could see something quite significant into Wednesday with those storms in the far southeast. For that Cape eventually does degrade away and we do go slightly more settled. Now if we do have a look at the precipitation charts, you can see again this afternoon those heavy showers and storms breaking out quite widely. See those darker greens and yellows and oranges there showing heavy precipitation for eventually fading away. As we head into Tuesday, you can see those severe storms breaking out across central areas. Once again, massive storm activity there, and it just continues through the afternoon, through the evening, before eventually fading away. And you could see some more severe storms through Wednesday afternoon across the southeast corner before eventually fading away. So again, very similar to the last few days, quite a lot of consistency with the positioning of these storms, but we'll just now have to see exactly the now cost situation when it does break out. If you do compare it to the Arpege, have a look at the uh, have a look at the um, instability here with the Cape. You can see through Monday significant Cape, very similar to the RP, uh, the WRF. Southern portions of Republic of Ireland could see some very severe storms today. Northern England, southern Scotland, parts of Wales, and southwest England. Eventually, Cape does degrade away before picking up once again tomorrow afternoon, and then through the morning of and early afternoon of Wednesday in the far south and southeast again through that London area. Surrey down into parts of Kent and maybe the Isle of Wight as well for eventually does degrade away through Wednesday into Thursday and Friday. If we do have a look at the precipitation, again heavy showers and storms breaking out this afternoon, widely once again continuing through the afternoon and eventually we do see those showers breaking out widely through Tuesday afternoon, eventually does pull away out into the North Sea and again, we could see some more heavy showers and storms across the far south through Wednesday afternoon for eventually degrading away and going more more settled, really. But not really, because we're seeing weather from Pushkin off the Atlantic for Wednesday. Uncertainty with that, as you can see, the UK view was still going warm on Wednesday, uh, sorry, on Friday. But here, the Arpege is bringing the weather front in. So we'll just have to see how it does play out. Later this week, though, it does look like it will stay unsettled, but not as thundery and cooler as well. So do you finish by having a look at the ensembles, these are the London ensembles from the latest GFS. Again, 
cooling down over the next few days, but still staying above average, and that's why mid to high 20s is still possible. Slight dip below average around six days' time, and then generally we could be well above average for the last week of August, back towards maybe even into those heat wave sort of threshold, maybe high 20s or even towards the 30 degree mark in the longer term of the upper air temperatures in around that low to mid teens point. So we could not be done with that warmth and the heat. I don't expect anything like mid 30s, but around that 30, 31, 32 degree mark is very possible, perhaps looking at these ensemble members for the last week of August. Precipitation is still there, nothing too crazy. Most precipitation will be falling over the next sort of three or four days with these thunderstorms and potential weather fronts. Perhaps in around a week's time, see some more precipitation. But beyond that, nothing too consistent at this stage. Just generally warmer than average. Could be setting up a very, very warm, hot August this. Uh, and generally summer at all. We'll have to have a look at those stats in detail at the end of the month and see what uh, what happens. So if we do have a look at the uh, Eastern Earth ensembles, again, very similar. Very warm at the moment, dropping slowly. Dropping quite suddenly in around six days' time before rising back above average and staying well above average over the next week uh, to the end of August. Again, precipitation signal was there, but there are 50 on the normal members here, so you'd already expect higher precipitation in the GFS, but still significant precipitation at times, so I don't think it will be an absolute drought to the end of the month, regardless of what's all the storm activity over the next couple of days. I do think there will be more showers to come through the end of August, and hopefully some weather fronts as well, giving us some more persistent, moderate to light rain, which will soak the ground a little bit better. Better. We will over the next few days we'll have a look again at the various mid to longer range pressure charts again because I will want to have a look what's happening that mid to longer range and I know everyone else here will as well but at the moment I didn't think it was appropriate to focus mainly on the heat and the thunderstorms we do have coming up. So anyway thanks for watching make sure you stay safe out there in the storms over the next couple of days do keep an eye on the weather warnings do keep an eye on Twitter as well I will be retweeting any changes in the weather warnings, any uh, specific charts or anything that I do I think everyone should know. So do check Twitter out if you are interested. And of course, do check the live radar if you are planning to go out. That is the best way to know if storms are on your way because they will show where that instability is, where showers and storms are breaking out. And hopefully will give you a good indication whether you will see showers and storms within the next couple of hours. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you again for another video soon.